Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates viewers. Now we are sort of continuing the same strain of conversations as we, you know, sort of try to unpack what's been going on in our society and what's leading to some of the violence that we are seeing and unfortunate situations, especially where children and women are concerned. So in this segment, I'm going to be joined by Pastor Clive Dutton. And of course, he is with the Seven Day Adventist Churches and has been very, very uh, much an activist within our space and so on. So, good morning and welcome to you, Pastor Dotting. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Well, I am getting ready for a full day, if you please. So, I'm happy to join the conversation. Uh, so could I make a statement based on your last interview? Yes, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I I have a little statement I use, and that is women were not meant to be intimidated, humiliated, or assassinated. Mm. And I want to repeat that. Women were not meant to be intimidated, humiliated, or assassinated. Now, you know the recent case with the four-year-old? I heard lots of comments. And sometimes I hate to say, but what actually happens in a large chunk of our society is that they blame the wrong person. I mean, whether it's demon possession, whether it's psychotic behavior, whether he was on cocaine or what have you, how in heaven's name can you justify that action? I mean, you see the pictures of that child, lolly child, and I mean, it breaks your heart. When I heard it the first time, I was stunned. And apparently, the woman, the mother of the child, was in a very abusive situation. And sometimes you wonder, where was the community? Where were the relatives? You know what I mean? Where, where were the law enforcement officers? So I think we have to be very careful that sometimes, you know, we don't come across. I hear a lot of people talking in the society, you know, and it boils down to making an excuse for the offender who committed an act of savagery. I just want to say that. And, you know, I want to stick with that point, especially the point you made about, you know, women are not meant to be humiliated and embarrassed and so on, because that is also some of the situations which lead to women keeping themselves in some harmful situations and then ultimately leads to their demise or the harm of their children and, and so on. I mean, what's been going on in our society when it comes to the, even the way we view women and especially when some of our women may not be making the best decisions, but instead of helping, we are shaming them? Well, you are totally correct. Now, whether you're in parliament or not, and this is the, I have to be very careful here, there's a very sensitive issue, but we have a classic case of abuse right before our very eyes, coming from the corridors of power, all right? And when you, and the case is all over the media, and, and I should tell you, it has attracted social media where politically, a political functionary of a particular party got in a very strange situation and is refusing, all right, to have the person charged is refusing, is saying she's not interested in that. I want to say this morning, I totally disagree with that position. Now, on the other hand, I want to tell ladies, be careful in your choices. Make the right choices. I am not, I feel that that guy should be put away for more than 10 years. All right? Clear to me. All right? If the facts on social media and mainstream media are correct. All right, any case like that, persons we put away for a long time. But I also want to say that women must have the courage to go forward and press charges. Otherwise, what will happen? We're going to have a repeat of this situation and we would never break the cycle of abuse. Now, this concerns me a whole lot because it would take courage by the community, courage by relatives. Look at what happened with Crystal Richaran. And now a relative has been shot and killed too, fallen up close on the heels of her being shot and killed. I want to tell you Tobago never become like Trinidad because Trinidad is a lawless place right now. Uh, the institutions are broken down. 
we are facing anarchy at a huge level and women you were never designed to be a punching bag you were never designed i i worked with a girl from tobago within the past 15 months and i applaud her she walked away because apart from the abuse she got tipped off from from somebody inside the mafiatic circle that she was to be killed by the guy she was sleeping with could you imagine that my dear could you imagine that that you are sleeping with a guy and that guy is planning to kill you and she walked away and gave her heart to christ and i applaud her because there there are some children involved here and i applaud her fortitude she wants what is best for her children acknowledging the mistake she made in the past but wants what is best for her children and i want to tell women this morning the best way is the matrimonial way i i, I have to say that the best way is the matrimonial way and you you must not feel any fake confidence that you're in a relationship where the guy has other women other children and you feel safe and you're saying you are number one you might be number none i want to repeat that you might not be number one you might be number none and the guy is just using you and i observed something in tobago where guys are taking their parents and grandparents had earned assets like land you know and investing it into the drug trade all right and pretty soon what you would have trinidad tobago will have a country where you have more foreign ownership than local ownership and that will be horrendous for tobago and you know i mean as as you're speaking on some of those issues that you know we may not be paying attention to because you know we're sometimes so trapped in our own little bubbles that we're not sure we're not Correct. really paying attention to the signs around us and um especially also when it comes to like relationships and how we handle relationships because a lot of times you know um children you know they grow up whatever they're left on their own they're left to their own devices and then they 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 fall into as as they grow older they fall into relationships that may not be healthy and then they result in these situations and like i said the cycle continues how do we get involved how do our people or the right thinking people of trinidad and tobago get involved in a way that helps them but not further stigmatize them or further discriminate against them you know, you asked a brilliant question. I was in a church, uh, not a Seventh-day Adventist church, but I was in a particular church, and that exact question I was raised. I say, uh, I'd say, number one, calling experts and individuals who have the experience, who may have a group, maybe the Rape Crisis Center, it, it, it may be a woman's group, it may be wind or wand or what have you, but calling individuals, I, I, I tell pastors, calling individuals you know what happens in the church sometimes if i should touch on that with your permission sure what happens in the church sometimes because we believe in god and study the bible we feel we are, ex we are experts in everything we are not experts in everything let us get that straight and we mustn't confuse faith in god with being experts in everything that's the first thing depend on people who have the training and i want to say form a support group where you are do the training and after you have do the training and people feel a certain level of competency and they feel safe in the space of counseling individuals you open the church to have people now i, I was in a certain place in tobago and somebody asked me but who will take care of them when they come the church I, i'm sorry to say that but i have to tell you the truth the church now, I'm not saying that governmental agencies and other NGOs don't have a role to play, but the church definitely has a role to play. Now, imagine you're in church, and I had that experience with one of our churches, where the, the, one of the chief administrators, who we call elders in the Seventh-day Adventist church, all right, was involved in the abuse of his wife. And I told that church, the church leadership, that guy should be suspended and even reported pending investigation we cannot have individuals in the church 
been absolutely poor role models. As I talk about the church, I want to talk to the parliamentarians. I want to talk to the business icons in our society who have a lot to say on this issue, but sometimes are poor role models themselves. So I am saying, start the training, all right? Get a group of interested people, or lay people with a proven track record, organize and form a very well-structured support group and take it from there. Now, I am one for an interfaith approach. As you know, I was in Mount St. George two weekends ago. You should yeah. know that. And we confronted all the hotspots, gun hotspots, gambling hotspots. And what I love about the village council, it was an interfaith activity. See, you see the Baptists and your white gongs, if you please, there. All right. And you had the evangelicals and you had the Anglicans. It, it was a village council thing. It wasn't pushed by our church, you know, uh, in the first instance, but they give support and the other five other church groups gave support. And you had the police there, I mean, playing a significant role. You had NGOs there and we ended up on the main road there outside Mount St. George. So that, that is the first step. Our next step is the formation of the support groups. So I am saying, and when people come to us and I heard the your former interviewee state that we have a tendency to be judgmental. Don't be judgmental. You don't want, you, you didn't go through the background of the person, the experience of the person. And you know something? Sometimes the abused person becomes the abuser. Yes. You know that, right? Yes. The abused person becomes the abuser. And ladies, please check the background of the guys you are selecting to be a life partner. All right? Please check the background of the person who's supposed to be your partner for life, not for a month, not for a year, but for life. That is what I want to say this morning. <laughs> and it's certainly such an excellent point to end on, um, you know, of course, some things that we need to, 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 to pay attention to, as well as, you know, um, addressing the fact that, you know, sometimes we in our society, and um, we are very reluctant to hold people account for their actions. And I mean, as you brought up the point of, you know, when you have certain people in power that are accused of certain things like this, and instead of, you know, putting that person in a place where they can treat with it, um, you know, we leave them there. And that really results in unfortunate situations. So I want to thank you so much, Pastor Doctor, for being you. on with us. God bless you. All right, take care. And viewers, don't go anywhere. We've got more coming up for you after the break. It's a brand new morning, rise up to a brand new day.